Hey, how's it going? It's Craig. I'm out in the garage and today we're going to start looking at a project with the DMG Game Boy. Let's take a look. Okay, so I've got a bit of a project I want to do on a DMG Game Boy. Um, this one has been given to me by Dainster. I mentioned Dainster in a couple of my videos. Um, Dainster sells at a lot of computer fairs and a lot of um, retro gaming fairs and things. So he's got a good collection of um, items for sale. And obviously there's not a lot of events going on at the moment. So he's been selling some parts out to the community. Um, we've done a little bit of a trading back and forth. I sent him some 3D printed items and he's sent me this and a couple of other things over the last couple of months which is pretty cool because if I try and find one of these on eBay there's people buying them left right and center at the moment so um, he sent me this through it's in pretty good condition the screen lens on it is very neat um, the quality and condition of it generally is pretty good the starting selector rubbed off on this thing um, but the ultimate goal of this is not to use this case I'll keep this case because I do really like the DMG play it loud series um, but I'm going to be using a different case and a different screen in the end system. Um, but Dane sent this through to me, he said it's got no power at all to it. Um, he's had it for a while, it's been in one of his boxes and uh, to take a look and see if I can use it for this project. So what we're going to need to do first of all is test this out with some batteries. Um, then if it's not working, we'll have a look whether it's the screen not working, whether it's the, the main board not working. But do our usual, we'll clean it up, we'll have a look at any faulty parts on there, whether it needs soldering or anything else. Hopefully get it up and running first of all. That's the first step of it. And then if we can get it up and running and get that first part working, um, I've got a IPS V4 screen which I want to put into this, which is possibly the ultimate of Game Boy DMG screens. Um, so I want to install that, but we've got to get a working backboard first of all. Um, the reason I needed a, a spared off of somebody was that all of my Game Boys have had the backlight mod done. And the backlight mod you need to put in a um, bivert system. So the bivert's an extra chip you put in there and it won't work with this IPS screen, it'll just mess everything up. So we need the clean Virgin Game Boy. <laughs> Whether it's working or not, we'll get it working first of all and then we'll go from there and put that screen mod in. Cool, so let's take a look. Let's try and get this working. If we can get this up and running in the next couple of minutes, uh, half hour, whatever, then I'll probably stick around today and do the IPS mod as well. If I can't, it'll probably be that I do it over the weekend at some point. So yeah. Either way to you, it doesn't matter. It's all going to be in this video, so keep looking and I'll catch you soon. Okay, so we've got our two important items. We've got our DMG Game Boy and we've got a cup of tea, which is always good when you're working out in the garage. So um, the Game Boy itself looks in pretty good cosmetic shape. It's not bad. Um, as you can see, it's got the, um, no scratches on the screen lens and it's original plastic screen lens, so it's not a replacement. Um, the two start and select buttons have worn away the, the text underneath it, but other than that, the, the DMG itself is in pretty good condition. So, um, uh, yeah, it just if I was going to keep this as it is, I'd probably give it a clean up and then I'd have it in my collection. So, obviously, the the issue with it is that Dean said he doesn't power on. Um, it's not that I don't trust him, but let's test that out. Um, I've got some batteries here. So let's pop the four batteries in. These are new batteries, so I know they're gonna have a decent charge in them. But as I said, a, a quick inspection inside. Terminals don't look bad either. So that's our four batteries in, no power. So exactly what Danes has said. Okay, so as it's not working, we're gonna take the batteries back out um, while we take it apart and just have a look inside, see if there's any issues. Um, but as I said, looking at this, the battery terminals inside, you're not going to see them massively on camera because of the, the lighting and things in here. Um, they don't look terrible, they, I've seen much worse. But what I'll do is I'll clean them all up with some contact cleaner and everything else anyway. Um, we'll clean the whole system, um, have a look if there's any broken parts inside, if there's any cracked solder joints or anything else. Give it a good service and then hopefully put it back together and see if we can get some life out of it. Okay, let's do that, take it apart, give it a clean up and then go from there. Cool.
Okay, so I'm just holding it back together now because obviously I don't want to screw it all back together and it not work. So I cleaned it all up, cleaned it with the contact cleaner and cleaned it with the um, isopropyl afterhold, uh, afterhold, <laughs> afterhold, alcohol after, um, just to make sure it's all nice and clean. I didn't resolder anything yet because I can't see anything on there that's a, an immediate issue. There's no cracked or dried solder points on there that I can see. Um, so let's try and power it up now. I'm mixed, mixed thoughts on this if I think that it's going to work or not, to be totally honest. Um, uh, it could work. It could be that something was just needed a good clean and tidy up. And then um, I've seen them work and I've had them work with just a clean up before. Um, if that doesn't work, then we're going to obviously have to delve a little deeper and see what else there is. So let's, moment of truth, let's give it a go. Ah, nothing. Okay, so it does look like we're going to have to delve a little deeper. Bit of an issue, but the, it's not that working now. I wanted to try and get onto the screen straight away, but um, let's get it working first of all. Hopefully we can get it working. Um, if we can't, then we'll have to have another look for another Game Boy. But yeah, a bit of a shame. I thought that was going to work, but okay. Well, I was hopeful it was going to work. I didn't think it was going to work. Um, so let me take it back apart. I've only I haven't put the screws back in. I've only put the batteries in quickly just to see if it powered up. So let's take it back apart and have another look over it. See if there's any drops in voltages. Okay, so time to get our trusty multimeter out. Um, so what we're going to do first of all, power this up. We've got it on 20 volts DC. Um, so there's batteries still in there. So I just want to make sure that we're getting the voltage through. So if I touch these two. Yeah, you can see that's the 5.5 .5 volts that we're getting off those four batteries. Um, if I turn it on and measure it again, the voltage should drop 0.59. That might be too much of a drop. That might signify that there's an issue somewhere. Um, it hasn't got the screen on there or anything else. Okay, so it didn't work when we tested that a minute ago. Um, we're back down to the basics again. I want to... I'm not convinced that there's a big issue with this. I think it's fairly straightforward. I don't think it's a big problem. Th these things don't generally go wrong that much. Um, so let's double check that voltage. So we know the voltage was coming through those battery terminals, don't we? 2.97 now. I've got a hunch that it's still those terminals not clean enough. I'm going to strip this down again. Um, it's pretty much in bits now, so let's take these batteries out. Um, I've got a bit of a hunch that it's those battery terminals. I don't know why. It, the battery terminals on these, even if they don't look massively corroded, they, they're quite a problem. Um, I'm guessing if I had a, uh, a power supply to plug into this, I could probably get it working off a power supply, but I. I don't have one here at the moment. So let's put that aside. Let's put that switch aside. I'm going to take these three back out and I'm going to really scrub them and clean them. I think there's something up with this that it's not, the continuity is not getting through properly and I think that's where we're having the issue. It's a, a really stupid fix and a really stupid thing to stop a system from working because you think if anything's going to go wrong it's going to be one of these power boards or something else. So um, let's try and push these out get them back out again. We cleaned them up earlier but I just really want to, I might even use a little bit of wet and dry on them um, just to give them a good little bit of a sand. Got this sanding block which I'm going to literally just scuff over the, everything on the back. Okay, we're getting a nice shine on that now. It could be that it's just oxidized on top and that's what's stopping it. It was passing through the, the, the voltage though, so I just think this is a, the obvious place to test. Um, the other thing I can do is use ones off another case and test that out. But let's clean them up, see what we can do first of all on these. Uh, and then Put it back together if we don't get any luck then i might try it with this board 
board out of here into the other cases with their, their battery terminals in there. This is like a, a really fine sanding block. You can wet and dry it and uh, you can use it as a grip for sanding paper as well or you can use it as a, a, a light sanding. It's very smooth. It's almost like paper. It's just got a little bit of grit to it. Um, I've had this for a while. I wash it every now and then and it comes back to new. So it's pretty good to have in the garage just for cleaning up contacts like this. Yeah, so around that one now, I can see there's a lot of corrosion on there. Where's my cotton buds gone? Put a little bit of isopropyl on there. It'll help with two things, one to clean it and two to get the sandpaper in a little bit cleaner and deeper into the, the surfaces. Okay. So I'm happy with those now. Let's pop them back into that case, see what we get, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so we are back together. Let's pop some batteries in. Make sure our switch is off first. What's going on there? Put the switch in the wrong place. There we go. Switch is off. Let's put some batteries in. Give it a go. Boom! Result. There we go. I thought it would be those battery terminals. Okay, so there's no game in there at the moment. Leave that there a second. Let's get a game. Top rank tennis. Well, not a bad tennis game actually. There we go. Nintendo. There we go. Top rank in tennis. Uh, working. Volume's working nice as well. Cool. So we've got that Game Boy up and running now. So the screen quality on it is average. There's one missing line across it. It's not the best of screens by the look of it. Try and get a No, it's not bad actually. I thought it had missing lines on it, but it's, it's not bad condition. We're not going to take this apart, as in this screen apart anyway, or do any mods to it. We're going to keep it as it is, but what we're going to do is replace it with another kit that I've got. Um, because this whole... You look at the quality on that now, how hard it is to see that screen. Um, it's just the whole, the whole DMG Game Boys. I can't believe how many hours I used to spend on one of these when I was a, a kid because um, it's it's just really hard to see and if you're not on the right angle or got the right light, I remember having the, the lights over the top and everything, That they, they're brilliant little systems, I love the Game Boy, it's probably one of my favourite consoles, it's definitely my favourite handheld, but the, um, the, the screen on it was just terrible, so backlighting it was brilliant, if you've got a backlight on a Game Boy those screens are, are miles apart, so they're really good screens. Um, but as soon as you um, do that, obviously it's backlit. It's still got a, the quality of the original screen there. Um, but this new one that I bought, the IPS uh, version 4, is meant to be in next level again. It's meant to be, the IPS screens are brilliant anyway, um, but the version 4 is meant to be absolutely outstanding. So. Let's take a look and install the new system. We're not even gonna use this case, we're just gonna use that backboard that we've been working on. Um, we might not even be using the battery terminals, but I wanted to get it working to be confident that it was a working system before we attempt this mod, um, just to eliminate all the problems. So, cool, so that's up and running. Uh, so no soldering, nothing else. I use contact cleaner, 
and I've used isopropyl alcohol, which I use on most of my videos to be honest. Um, and just cleaning it all up and really going over it. And that little sanding block, that sanding block's a, a 180, 180 sanding block. Um, I use these for quite a few things. They're good for smoothing off paint, they're good for um, cleaning up surfaces on um, metal. This one needs a bit of a wash now, it's been used quite a few times for different things. So I'll take that out in the house, wash it with soapy water and it'll be back to new again and I can use that again. Um, but it's quite a soft, mild sandpaper so it's not going to damage too much. Okay, so let's get on with the mod and we'll catch up in a second. Cool. Okay, so this is the package I got. It's a um, AliExpress special. I bought it a few weeks back. These two little screwdrivers came in there as well. So these screwdrivers is one Phillips and one Triwing. I wouldn't normally use the ones which come with the packs, but um, my other set is, it's only over here, it's not out of the way, but I fancied using the ones that came with it just to see how good the quality they were. And they've actually done well so far. The, the Triwing especially has been pretty good. So um, let's show you what else is in this package. So we've got the screen itself. Um, comes in a nice little tub away tub. Uh, with a clip on the front, so open that up and we've got the screen, so let's have a look at that. Okay, so let's move things out of the way. Okay, so first of all we've got inside of here a... Oh, let's get everything out. We've got a back plate for the screen, so that's to align it into the system I, I believe. I think that's just a sticker, we'll keep that aside just in case we need that. We've got the backboard, so this is a, a replacement board for your system. Immediately just rolling that wheel, you can feel it's clicky. So it's not like the original Game Boy one which is a smooth movement. This one's clicky and it's got a press in button on it as well. You've got your up, down, left and right buttons. You've got your start and select and you've got an A and B button as well. Um, so this replaces the whole front of the board of the, the system that we've been working on. So when I take that ribbon cable back out, this whole front of the board on this system is getting replaced with this one. That's why I wasn't too worried about the screen quality, but that screen's actually pretty decent, actually. So we'll keep that as a spare for the future. Uh, on the back of this, we've got ribbon cable connectors, um, and that's pretty much it. It's a very basic board. I'm guessing a lot of the, the technology is in the screen and into another board. So let's take a look what else we've got in here. So we've got two more items, or three more items by the look of it. Let's move it out. So we've got the the screen interface board. So it's quite delicate, quite light. This is where all the, the goodness happens, I believe. Um, so it's a DMG interface board. This one connects into this ribbon cable here. We've got a large ribbon cable to connect into there and then connects into your main system like we were doing earlier. Then we've got our screen. So our screen has got a protective layer on it, thankfully. Um, and it's got another ribbon cable. Well, it's not a ribbon cable, it's one of those push-click cables um, to click it into place once we're ready with it. So that's pretty nice, nice size screen as well. And then we've got our lens cover, which is a glass lens cover. So that's all there. I'm gonna put that just loosely aside a minute. And let's have a look what else is in that package. So in here, we also have a shell. So this is what I was saying about the um, the DMG that we were working on earlier, that yellow one, I, it's in good condition but we're going to keep that separate but I wasn't too worried about the quality of the shell because I knew we had another one in here. Um, nice little thank you note from the, the suppliers, so they do eBay and AliExpress by the look of it. Um, so we're going to put that aside, I don't need to concern myself with that. I went for a white shell rather than a grey DMG or any other colour. Um, quite nice shell actually. Pretty decent quality, you can tell immediately that the quality is not too bad on it. Lots of little parts inside, let's put them aside a second. Um, print quality on that is pretty neat. So a lot of them don't say Nintendo Game Boy, they've gone for something else or they don't have anything on there. Um, your buttons and your start and select look pretty neat as well. Um, quality wise it's a nice plastic, it's very similar plastic to the original DMG. So that's quite nice. Got the um, support on the back with the obviously the for the metal shielding to stop any interference. Um, what else we got? We got a battery cover, and we got battery terminals. So we didn't even have to worry about those battery terminals earlier. But I'm glad they're working on other system because I will use that in the future. Um, yeah, no serial number or anything else on there. Um, nice looking case actually. 
So yeah, I'm pretty chuffed with this. The reason I wanted to use this one is that this inside screen is cut bigger. Um, you can do it manually on the, the original case, but I thought buying a whole kit off of um, AliExpress would be a little bit easier and um, saves a little bit of time when we're putting together. So this is already cut and ready for us to put this screen in, so hardly any messing around. Let's have a look in the little baggies, what we've got as well. So we have, oh, a load of screws. So this is pretty much a full kit replacement, so all you need is that board. So we've got our A and B buttons, put them aside. We've got our D-pad button in black as well. We've got our power switch in black. Oh nice, we've got the link cable cover in well in white, so that's quite nice. And then we've got all the screws that we'll be using. Um, I might use the originals, I might use these, I'll have a look as we want to progress. Um, but we'll put them aside, they're always handy to have for uh, other projects. As you've seen, that one came without screws inside, so it's always nice to have some um, spare screws for future use. Um, but ideally I would have liked these to be in white, so that would be pretty cool having a white Game Boy shell, white buttons um, with this screen, it would look pretty neat. Um, any other bag we've got, I don't open this right now, the two different rubber select, uh, rubber inserts for the D-pad and for the A and B button and then the rubber insert buttons for start and select. So I won't open those, put them aside. Let's have a look at getting that board out of that yellow DMG, placing it into here, screwing it into place and then we'll have a look at how we install the screen. Cool. Okay, so we've got to now insert the screen and insert the um, plastic holder that goes with it. So this case doesn't need any cutting, which is, which is great. Um, if we were to use one of the original ones, we'd have to cut away at the screen. Maybe even cut some of the posts away on it as well, just to make it all fit. But because this was designed for this screen, everything's ready for us. Um, we literally put this screen into this holder. So the holder comes here and then this cable can fold over and connect on the other side. Um, I'm not sure whether this sticky stuff here, whether this is double sided sticky to hold the screen into place. Um, I'll try and peel it now, see if it is. Yeah, it is. So what we're going to do then, rather than fiddle around and try and balance things and hold things, I'm going to sellotape this or sticky tape this into place. So I'm going to use a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of this uh, double sided sticky. I'm going to hold this screen in place so it doesn't uh, fall when we're trying to align it in a second. Okay, so let's do that. Let's cut some small lengths of that. Okay, so I've cut away two small pieces of that um, sticker. So what I'm going to do is try and peel it and then stick it onto the back of this screen. The aim is that once we stick it onto the back of the screen, only tiny bits. It doesn't need to be in any particular location. One bit might do it actually, but we'll we'll put two on just to give it a bit of support so it doesn't fall around in that case when we're when we're putting it in there. Oh, I'm throwing away the sticky bit, yeah. Okay, so we've got two parts of that double-sided sticky on there now. I'm going to peel off the back of it. Okay, so it's left the sticker on there. So they're double-sided, so it's going to stick to this plastic when we put it on. Okay, so we're going to stick this into place. So that fits in there nice and neat. Um, 
it's not going to add too much to it but now the screen is not going to fall when we turn it over so what we're going to do is we're going to take off this screen protector this is the moment of truth because I can't be touching that screen tons now so I want to make sure that is out of the way we're going to flip this over and pop this into the holder so everything should align pretty neatly so um, it's a uh, it's designed to fit into this case and it's not doing so at the moment but do you know what when I'm pushing that in it feels like these top two supports are not are getting in the way a little bit whether I push the screen far enough down I don't know I don't think there's much further it could have gone down So that's pretty much in that holder where it should be. So I don't want to move it too much. And then these should go, the idea is that these cutouts here and here should go around those two um, uprights really. But it's very tight, really tight. And it's stopping that screen from going in. If I show you on here, it's stopping up here, the screen from slotting in. I'm going to cut that one off, it's a little bit lower than the others and it seems to be the only one that's stopping that screen from falling into a nice position so let's take that one leg out um, you shouldn't need to but then this is trial and error and it is AliExpress equipment so who knows what um, quality control has been done on it so we're just going to cut that out with a, a pair of snips um, I'll grab some a second and I'll be back ok typically you can't find my snips but we're just going to take this out with a pair of point no pliers I think this will come out fairly easy. There we go. So we snapped them off. We're not going to need that piece anymore. Um, hopefully now this screen will go in fairly smoothly. That was a bit of a nightmare because you think that they would have all the holes cut and everything totally aligned ready for it. Um, but it doesn't seem to be the case. So let's push this back in. It was in and it was sitting in there. But even these now, they're not going around that screen that post very neatly so I might take them out as well I'm going to take that other support out as well I'm a little bit annoyed because I, I thought this case would have been perfectly aligned and it does there are holes there ready for it but it's not it's not perfect if I'm totally honest okay so let's try this screen for the final time hopefully Let's clean it off, make sure there's no fingerprints on it. Okay, so let's pop this screen back in. Fingers crossed this goes in first time now and then sits nice and snug to that frame. Yeah, that's much better. So I can feel now that that's gone right in. So when I turn it over, that screen's nice and flush. Um, not flush to the top of the screen, but flush to the back of the case where it should be. So that original, those two posts, there are cutouts for them, but they were still like hitting the screen or hitting the um, the the surround. The surround's just not in the right place for um, where they sit. So that's a little bit annoying that you've had to do that afterwards. But there we go. That's that's what you get with some AliExpress stuff. Okay. So next thing to do is insert this. And so there's a, a socketed connector on here, and then this ribbon cable connects into it. So we're going to align that and then we're going to push that ribbon cable on top and with literally a little bit of pressure onto it it should pop into place there we go and you feel the click when it goes in so that's in place now so what we don't want you can see it's trying to move around already we'll get another bit of that double-sided tape we'll take this into place then it's in a, a nice solid position for us to um, use going forward so let's get some of that double sided tape on it and move on from there, cool. Okay, same thing as we've done with the back of the screen, we're just going to get one side of the adhesive off. I'm going to literally put this onto the back of the plastic here. So we've got that in place and then we're going to peel it off to leave, leave the sticky stuff in place. It's just to hold things in place, it's not really to hold it permanently. Um, so that sticky side is there now and we're going to leave this down and it's going to hold our board in place. So we've got our ribbon cable connected, our board is in place and it's all nice and firm. So if I turn that upside down, 
nothing's going to come out. I just touched the screen, so I've got a load of fingerprints on this already. So I'm going to need to clean that before we put that lens on. Okay, so next part is we're going to connect um, this part of the system to the the new main board that we've got. Um, so we're going to need to do that, but also we're going to need to connect the ribbon cable to the main system. But before I do that, I want to put all the buttons in place ready, just so we're not having to take it back and forth. So let's pop in the D-pad, pop in these two A and B buttons. I don't think these matter which ones you're putting in. No, nope, they both fit in quite nicely. And we're going to use the rubbers from this kit as well. We're not going to use it for the original DMG. So let's take a look at these. So we've got our A and B rubber. Again, there's two little um, circles that hold these into place and little pillars. So they go in nice and neat like that. We've got our start and select buttons. Again, it's got a little circle cut out of this and then we can pop it onto here just to fit it in place and that holds in place nice and easy for us now. Uh, next thing to do is our D-pad. Again, two little pillars and the D-pad buttons go in like so. So that's pretty much all the buttons in place. Pretty straightforward. The only thing we haven't done on this so far, which I need to do off of one of the systems, is take away a speaker off another system and solder it into the system here because it doesn't come with a speaker. So let's take a speaker from one of our old Game Boys, um, solder it in place and then that's the only soldering we're going to have to do. Uh, the rest of it then is literally dropping this in, connecting it all up and we're up and running. Cool. Okay, so moment of truth. Let's power them on and see if it works. Ooh, look at that. Okay, that looks pretty cool. We can press the side button to scroll through colors. But we'll get into the menu and things in a little bit because this is really nice screen. I'm not sure whether that is in the right position. It looks pretty good. Apparently you can move it on screen as well with the display, but um, we'll have a look at that. So the brightness works. It just scrolls through and then scrolls back through it. Look how bright that gets. Those colours are lovely. And there's our on screen display. Right, I'm going to get. I'm not going to do with the rest of it. I'm going to put it all together first and then we'll go through the on screen menu separately because this is really nice. It looks really, really good. Um, I do like those black buttons. I was thinking of getting some white buttons for it, but I do like the black ones in there. Cool. So let's let's screw it all back together. I'm holding it together at the moment, but so far so good. I'm looking really nice. I'm going to clean this screen before we put the, the screen lens on there. Um, but let's get it all back together and see what we get to. Um, and then we'll go through that on screen menu and we'll test it out with some games.
Cool. Okay, so let's take a look at this. We've got it all back together. I've polished the lens and everything, make sure it's nice and clean. Um, I do quite like those black buttons in there. They, they're quite nice. Um, but I wouldn't mind seeing if I can get some white ones to go in there and a white screen uh, lens to go around it as well. Um, let's focus back in. Hello. Focus. There we go. So um, I just want to do a quick overview of this screen. It's absolutely amazing. I think the IPS screens that they've done before are amazing, but this version with the on-screen display just takes it to a whole new level. Um, to me, this is the ultimate Game Boy screens for the DMG. I don't think there's anything more you can do with it. So let's turn it on. I'm going to put the volume up a second so you can hear the, the sound on this game when it first starts up. This one's got voice synth on it as well, I think. For Game Boy, that's amazing. Listen. <laughs> absolutely amazing so um first of all look at those colors on there so that's not um a standard dmg screen straight away it looks absolutely stunning um but what i can do on the roller wheel on the left hand side i can do the brightness of the screen turn it right down or turn it right up so again straight away from a game boy having a backlit screen is amazing um those backlight versions that you can do and i've done a couple of those they're really nice, but there's nothing on this. This is absolute next level of, of screen quality. Um, press the drop wheel in on the left, and we go to different color modes. So you've got your standard yellow uh, tones of the, the Game Boy colors. Press it again, we go to green, then to light blue, dark blue, purple, and then to a white. And then we go back around, I believe. Oh no, we go into a red, and then to the color versions. So that's just on the drop wheel on the left hand side by pressing it in once. If you press and hold it, he says, you get an on-screen display. So this on-screen display then is um, up and down with the jog wheel, but you press it in on the item to select it and then you can go up and down. So we can do the brightness again. Um, you can do the virtual, uh, virtual, vertical position. So you can move it up and down within this screen. So when you're looking at it, and if your screen is off slightly, so I can see, look, we're getting a massive border at the top now. If you can position this screen pretty much with your screen lens in place, which is absolutely amazing. So I'm gonna try and do it just eyeballing it now, but once I get it and I'm holding it, I'll be doing it properly for my best view and angle, really. And then you can do the same to left and right with the horizontal uh, position. So let's get that into there pixel effect so this is almost like adding like um, scan lines to what some people would do on a, a retro system on a, a modern TV it literally just makes it look a little bit more like an original Game Boy so you can see hopefully the difference between off and on so it literally just breaks up that screen a little bit and gives it a bit more of a retro look rather than that crisp look and I'll leave it off for now um, battery display on and off puts a little battery logo up in the top left hand corner so I'm going to leave that off as well. Um, color adjust, this is quite interesting because now you can pick your three colors. So we've got three colors. We've got the yellow, um, the pink and the black on this screen. Uh, what you can do on here, it's always going to be shown as red, green, blue, but you can just balance out the colors on that red, green, blue to match. So if I change that one down, you can see that white is now turning into a, a light blue. Change the RGB colors. If I put this one down as well, and if I put the last one down, obviously we're going to go to black as the background, and that's no good, but we'll try it just to show you what it looks like. Yeah, so you can change everything on these colors. So it's playing around and getting that color combination that you want for your backgrounds. Um, the Game Boy has got a zero, which is your background color, and then it's got one, two, three, which is your color palette. Uh, similar to the NES, I think it is, where you've got four colors, one being a background. Um, so that's quite nice. It's a bit retro looking <laughs> um, we're gonna come out of this one how do we get out of it press and hold there we go press and hold and we go back so oh there we go so as we're scrolling through you can see what color we're affecting so at the moment we've got the blue which is the background the yellow the pink and then the black so if we make that black a different color the text and the tennis and things will change as well so that's pretty cool. I do like that, that you can really play around with the colors on there. 
If I put that up, we'll have red text. So there we go. So press and hold it, and I go back to the main menu. Okay, so now we've got there, and then we've got the last menu option is a factory reset, which obviously we don't want to do. So I'm going to press and hold the jog wheel end to go back, and then we're back at the main menu. Uh, well, back at the main screen and our gameplay. So, not not the best color options and not the best com combination, but absolutely chuffed for this. Absolutely loving it. So, I'm gonna have a play around with it, play some games, and let you know what I think of it in a little bit. Cool. Okay, so there we have it, a fully modded DMG Game Boy with the IPS version four um, screen mod um, with the on-screen display. Absolutely stunning piece of kit. Um, I've had a quick play on top rank in tennis. Unfortunately, the screen doesn't make me play the game any better. I'm still crap at it. Um, but yeah, really, really tough with how this is looking. Can't wait to play my rest of my games on this now. Um, the viewing angle, I know it's important to some people. Uh, Dana, I know you're going to love this, but look at that. You can view it from pretty much any angle you want. Um, really, really good screen, that is. Um, can't fault it at all. £40, I think it was, with the shell. So... If you're, if you're looking for an upgrade on your DMG, this can't be um, passed up. This is probably the ultimate screen mod that I think you can get. Um, you can do sound mods and you can do battery mods, which I think I'll do in the future because AA batteries are a bit of a pain in the ass. Okay, so it's a pretty easy mod. I just literally took that back panel from the Game Boy that Dana sent me. Um, the rest of it came with the kit, everything in there, put it all together, and then two little solder points for those um, speakers. And that's it. Really, really simple. I would say basic level modding it was such a great result. So, yeah, can't fault it. So, any questions, anything else, give me a shout. Uh, let me know in the comments down below, and I shall catch you soon. Cheers.